set in the heart of industrial southeast Lancashire, one of the most densely populated areas of the world, is the city of Salford. It is an ancient city which received its charter as long ago as 1230. A city which has always been in the forefront of the country's battle for prosperity. And these streets, despite the soft cloak of snow, still show the scars of that battle. Although 30 miles from the sea, Salford is one of the main British ports, standing at the inland end of the Manchester Ship Canal. And these homes were within the shadow of the huge cranes and elevators which rise inside the docks complex. Now demolished, they were also within the shadow of many of Salford's great industrial concerns, for they were built to accommodate the workers in the mills and factories which helped to make the city famous. It was people from streets such as these who inspired Harold Brighouse to write Hobson's Choice and Walter Greenwood to write Love on the Dole. And now their way of life provides the setting for the popular television series Coronation Street. But even an industrial city has its more pleasant spots, and in Salford, the largest of its parks lies on the crown of Buell Hill. At one time, this spacious estate belonged to Sir Thomas Potter, who was, ironically enough, Manchester's first Lord Mayor. Towards the end of the last century, these beautiful grounds, together with the hall, were acquired by the corporation to be used as a municipal park. And ever since, the people of Salford have been able to enjoy its open spaces, its magnificent trees and quiet walks and as here, some of its homemade thrills. Not far away is the older and adjoining Seedley Park and also another large estate, Hart Hill, the hilly grounds of which have been developed as a miniature golf course. Whether for skiing or strolling, the slopes of the park are a never-ending attraction, now enjoyed by any visitor, but once the closely guarded preserves of a few wealthy residents. There are older citizens who can still remember when green fields swept from this elevated parkland, down the valley and across the Irwell to the de Trafford estate, now one of the greatest industrial areas in the world. These pleasant surroundings were once the haunt of famous men. One was Thomas Agnew, the millionaire, who was acknowledged as one of the greatest authorities in the world of fine art. As was befitting for a man of eminence, his residence became a second home to celebrities such as Sir John Tenniel, Leighton, Millet, Burne Jones, William Gladstone and Charles Halley. Light Oaks Park, a short distance away from the old village of Earlhams of the Height, yet another private estate acquired by the corporation. Here was one of the many large houses which belonged to the Hayward family, noted as bankers, politicians, landowners and prominent churchmen. Now, amidst the profusion of flowers, the young and the old can enjoy the seclusion and quiet of a park oblivious of a tragic past. For the Lady Penelope, daughter of the Earl of Barrymore, was forced to contract a loveless marriage with General Sir James Chumley. She was driven to clandestine meetings with her true lover on Swinton Moor, but their association was discovered and she was divorced as an adulteress in 1737. Eventually, lonely and childless, she sold her estate to the Duke of Bridgewater. The thick bank of rhododendrons screens the pool named in her memory, a somber spot on dark days. It is said that heartbroken at the loss of her lover, she drowned herself in its melancholy waters. 
Rising from the Erwell Valley are the lofty homes of the Lower Kersel Estate, an early development by the corporation in their program to rehouse those displaced by demolition. Almost within sight of these flats, and on the elms of the Height Ridge, is a pleasant residential area surrounding the imposing brick-built church of Holy Angels. It's but a short step from this playgroup to Winstonley Close, built by the Booth Charities. For Humphrey Booth, a merchant who lived in the early 17th century, is one of Salford's most illustrious sons. He bequeathed the revenue from a number of farms to be used for the benefit of the city's poor people. Today, these former farmlands are the commercial heart of Manchester, and this revenue has made it possible for the trustees to build a number of small self-contained estates for senior citizens, such as this one at Chelmerdine Gardens, where the plan is based on the idea of a village community with a social centre. The corporation have planned their new estates in a similarly skilful manner, preserving many of the natural features. Here at Brentwood, within sight of tall chimneys and equally towering blocks of flats, a quiet backwater has been created overlooking Seedley Park. Its particular charm lies in the unpretentious way in which buildings have been grouped on a slope, surrounded by mature trees and related to them. A simple and articulate solution to urban housing a far cry indeed from the ranks of humble terraced houses, so often a feature of our industrial towns. But back to the great park of Buell Hill. There was a time when this area of Salford once boasted many stately mansions, standing as monuments to their wealthy owners. And among them was Hope Hall, the home of the Baileys, who were often visited by their small nephew, later to carve a niche in the Hall of Fame as Clive of India. Opposite the park is the grammar school building on the site of another Haywood residence. Here live two sisters, Isabella and Monica Haywood, whose work for the blind gained national recognition. And many years later, the grammar school numbered amongst its pupils two who have gained international fame, the actor Albert Finney and the artist Harold Riley. Salford's oldest park is named after the great Sir Robert Peel, twice Prime Minister, but forever renowned as the father of British police forces. It is set in the very heart of the city, a stone's throw from the town hall and alongside the River Irwell. In the old mansion and its later extensions are Salford's main library, museum and art gallery, containing a full-scale reproduction of houses of past centuries and the largest collection of works by the famous Lancashire artist L.S. Lowry, who once attended the Salford School of Art. Now, the art gallery is dwarfed by the buildings of the new university which embrace it on three sides. And the students between exams can relax in various ways or revise on these sheltered lawns. Little known even to most Salfordians is the city's hidden gem, Clues Park which is a quiet retreat in the residential area of Hyre Broughton. Its special attraction is the city's only lake, which is well stocked and a popular spot for fishermen. Clues Park bears the name of another local family who were important landowners in the Broughton district. Among their lasting memorials are a number of bridges spanning the Irwell. True, some were to make passage easier between various parts of their estates, though in time they also led to the development of the Broughton area. But one in particular was a gift to the community. <coughs> Dominating the north of the city, often lonely, and in the winter enshrouded in mist, is Kersel Moor, a high plateau rich in history and legend. In the last century it was the home of the Manchester races, and thousands of Salfordians and Mancunians would come by horse, coach and foot to picnic and watch them. Here too was the home of the old Manchester Golf Club, the second oldest in England. Although the course is now no more, the former members still play for the world's two oldest golf trophies. And it was on Kersel Moor that the last official duel was fought in England in 1804. For in those days, Salford was one of the most important garrison towns in the British Isles. The combatants for this honour were a major and a private. 
The city is entered at this westerly point by Eccles Old Road, which bridges Gilder Brook. Legend has it that St. Patrick and his followers baptised converts in the stream. A well nearby was claimed to have curative powers, and Ladywell Hospital marks the spot. Here at Fairhope Avenue is to be found a fine example of municipal planning in the best tradition of suburban design gracious and harmonious marriage between town and country. Previously, it was an area occupied by large houses and gardens, where most owners kept their own stables, and no doubt polo and horse riding would have been the favourite pastimes on warm summer evenings. Formerly known as Ingleside, Oakwood Park and its attractive mansion in grounds alongside the busy East Lancashire Road was once the home of Major Edward Pilkington, an outstanding personality in the Boy Scout movement. Now in the control of the corporation, this large hall is a home for the elderly, while the surrounding parkland has become a perfect training ground for dog and mounted sections of the Manchester and Salford Police Force. Dogs and horses from here have won prizes in competition with police forces from all parts of the British Isles. One famous horse, Cherry Grove, a light chestnut gelding standing 16 hands 2 inches, was sold to the King in 1936. And down the years, the tradition continues that the monarch rides a police horse at the ceremony of the Trooping of the Colour. Near at hand to this almost rural setting, which is so prized for the schooling of these animals, are suburban side roads where young horses can be introduced to traffic conditions before eventually patrolling the busy thoroughfares of Salford and Manchester. Indeed, few cities can boast such a facility. A surprise, perhaps, for those who know Salford only by its grimy industrial and commercial reputation. Polluted within a few yards of its source, the slow-moving Irwell enters Salford here at Agecroft. No longer a sparkling river, yet its banks provide picnic spots, and once a year attract large crowds for the Agecroft regatta, an event possibly unique for an industrial city. There was a time, however, when the river was famed for its clear waters, and John Byram, the 18th century poet and philosopher who wrote Christians Awake and invented modern shorthand, and who lived here at Kersal Cell, wrote as a Cambridge student how much he missed its charm, saying in a letter from London, I long to jump into Kersal River. But now Kersal Cell, in its earliest days a Cluniac monastery, has become a country club. days bring to a close this glimpse of some of Salford's more pleasant parts. Many of them have come to the city as legacies from benefactors who spent a lifetime in the service of their fellow citizens. Today the corporation, into whose trust they were placed, are not only preserving them, but also creating more open spaces and gardens among the flats and maisonettes, the other side, as it were, of a great industrial city.